an exciting time to be a golfer right now, isn't it? Who would have thought that golfers would end up having so much in common with children of divorce? Not us. The latest news comes from Phil Mickelson himself, and he's taken a surprising stance. Guess what? Mickelson's calling for peace between the Saudi-backed Rebel League and the PGA Tour. All right then, let's go ahead and talk all about it. First off, Mickelson's new take. For better or for worse, in this new golfing landscape, press conferences have become much more important than the golf itself. So yeah, no surprise journalists asked him about his thoughts on the Live versus PGA subject on the Chicago Live event conference. Interestingly though, in these times of intense tension between the two circuits, Phil seems eager to establish peace. When you think about his very long history with the PGA Tour, it kind of makes sense. But then again, he's making more money with Live than he ever has at the Tour. So shouldn't his loyalties lie solely with the Saudi-backed golf circuit? So what he thinks is that both the formats are good for the game. He also said the Rebel League is doing great, and it now has a permanent place on the golf scene. Very gangsta. So it only makes sense for both sides to work together instead of doing what they're doing right now. He also stepped back from the antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour. This is also a major move towards peace, considering that all the lift defectors are still banned from all the tour's events. All things considered, it doesn't look like he's changing signs or anything. In fact, he makes it sound like a gesture of kindness to the tour, or better yet, a wake-up call. But how much weight do his opinions have? Following up, is it really good for the game? The Live Tour is now a reality, but remember when it was still in the works? People were predicting how long it would take for it to collapse. This was mostly because this new league was bringing in quite a lot of new ideas and pattern changes to the gameplay. And golf fans have known and loved the classic golf presented by the tour for decades now. So all the speculations of the Rebel League's failure were justified. But life is unpredictable and full of surprises. Here's a hack though. Add some of that good old oil money to the mix and those surprises will almost always be in your favor. Follow us for more life advice. So yeah, credit where credit's due. Norman's ideas weren't bad. They may be blasphemous to the traditional golf fans and players, but they were innovative. And of course, with the power of cash fueling the machine, those ideas had the right execution. The point is, maybe both sides should hear Mickelson out. Any kind of merger or partnership really is good for the game. As the 52-year-old mentioned, the PGA Tour provides classic, traditional golf, and the Live League is bringing in new fans because of its fresh pattern. Together, they could be a force, a perfect combination of historic play and innovative fantasy league-style golf. The other thing he pointed out was that the Live League is here to stay, so we think the yin and yang need to merge here. If not for the sport, then just for good business. Moving on, the other reason a truce makes sense. When all this was still new, the Live League had everything except young star players. Sure, they had Mickelson and then later Dustin Johnson, but still, not enough star power to boast. And, well, as we know, that's changing. Brooks Kepka, Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, Henrik Stenson, and now Cameron frickin' Smith. And so many more, Norman has gathered quite the army. If the PGA and the DP Tour keep the same strict bans and sanctions going in the future, it'll become a serious problem. In fact, Mickelson also noted this. In the past, it was the tour that had all the good, world-class players, and clearly, that's not the case anymore. Live Golf has lured in a lot of them. Now, to be honest, how long can it go on like this? Such big names who attract fans and bring in sponsors, not playing the majors, and the other important events sanctioned by the PGA? If there isn't some kind of compromise made by both circuits, we guess we'll have to wait and see how the lawsuits go. But, of course, there's another problem, too. This isn't so simple. The rankings. So, Norman has been unsuccessful so far in convincing the OWGR to grant his players international ranking points. If the ranking drought continues, some of the best players in the world are at the bottom of the international leaderboards. Players like Cam Smith have already come forward and said it's unfair that they aren't being given points. That's bad both for these players and the OWGR and the PGA because the fans and sponsors of these golfers will want answers as to why their performances aren't being rewarded. Up next, let's revisit Phil Mickelson's past. Sure, he wants a truce now, but we can't blame him because it seems like the right thing to do for the benefit
benefit of the sport, but that hasn't always been the case. He's had his share of grievances with the tour. In fact, he said he wanted to join the new Rebel League just for it to be used as leverage against the PGA. Why? Because, according to him, the tour needed to change a lot of its policies. There was no pressure for them to do so, so he thought that joining the saudi back League would pressurize the tour into changing its ways. So, does he now think the PGA has transformed enough? Well, they've raised the overall purses, for starters. He joined the Live League, even though he understood fully how wrong it was to accept tons of money from the Saudi government. From his comments, it was clear that he disagreed with the Saudi policies. He took the money from the same scary people he criticized. His views on the repressive government's policies haven't changed still, but he says he's in it just for the golf. And of course, it doesn't hurt hurt to have $200 million in your account now, does it? We know that his relations with the tour were damaged beyond repair, and now it looks like he wants to make up. This could have something to do with how much he wants to keep paying the majors. So yeah, apparently he's already okay with leaving the past behind and making amends for the future of his career. Well, let's see how this goes. Coming up, some tea from Greg Norman himself. You can't talk about a possible ceasefire and not include Greg Norman, the CEO of Live Golf, and and the agent of chaos in the conversation. Phil's suggestion might be good. The boss man doesn't like it one bit. Norman said in an interview that he wasn't going to sit down and have a talk with the other side. He said his product is working, and so he doesn't need any negotiations. Yeah, peace can head right out. But hey, before you judge him, hear him out as well. He revealed in the same interview what he said before, too. So apparently he's contacted Jay Monahan, the PGA commissioner, countless times this whole year and tried to convince him to cooperate with the Live League. According to him, his calls for a partnership were constantly turned down. He now thinks he's done his share of trying to make things work, and he's no longer going to do it because, clearly, Monaghan doesn't want the truce. Speaking of Norman's product being successful, let's also not forget that from the looks of it, his troops are only going to strengthen further. While we're still dealing with the shock of Henrik Stenson and Cam Smith leaving, he's out here telling us that the agents of the top 10 and other star players are blowing up his phone asking for a deal with Live Golf. If this is true, then the PGA might need negotiations much more with the Saudi back league. But let's keep in mind that players like Roy McElroy and Tiger Woods are campaigning and convincing young talent to stay on the tour. If it worked on Cameron Young, it's probably going to work on other players too. Lastly, here's what the PGA thinks. Nope, they don't want peace either. Rory McElroy said recently that things should go by the rule book. This means they should be settled in court. Monaghan isn't too eager to have a merger either. The mutual beef between the players on both sides has gone too far. At this point, the beef has resurrected and is now a whole live cow mooing the hell out of golf peace. We had PGA players suggest a strike because they didn't want to play alongside the defectors. We had Tiger Woods say they turned their backs on the tour that made them. There was, and still is, some serious shade throwing going on for the PGA golfers. There you go. Peace sounds good, but we hate to break it to you, Mr. Mickelson. It's not going to happen. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Phil Mickelson is right in wanting peace? Or do you think these two circuits won't mix together well? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.